Hi everyone, I'm Tracy Smith from Numerical Insights. In this video, I'm going to cover a metric which measures how fast you sell through your inventory. This metric goes by several names, so don't worry if you hear multiple references. They're all the same metric. Inventory turns, inventory turnover, inventory turnover rate, and inventory turnover ratio. I'm going to call it inventory turns. What do we mean when we reference an inventory turn? What did we actually turn our inventory into? Well, we sold it and turned it into revenue. So the number of inventory turns tells us how many times we sold through our inventory in a given period of time. Most companies measure inventory turns on an annual or quarterly basis. When I create real-time dashboards for clients, I also like to display inventory turns based on the last 365 days so they can see if they're improving their inventory management without having to wait for the end of the next quarter or end of the next year to find that out. How do we calculate inventory turns? There are two formulas. In both cases, the values put into these formulas are in dollars, euros, pounds, or whatever the base currency is for your company. The difference between these two formulas is that the first one, since it contains sales, has a price component built in. The second formula does not relate in any way to price. The finance department tends to like the first formula, whereas supply chain professionals like the second formula. Since supply chain professionals use this metric to measure how well they manage inventory, their interest lies in the speed at which product is shipped out to customers. That means their focus is on unit quantities and not selling price. My focus is on helping clients with inventory and operational analytics, so I'm going to use the second formula for the rest of this video. While the formula looks simple, there are a few important details you need to know about when determining the values for the cost of goods sold and inventory for this formula. Let's start with the cost of goods sold. We can just pull this off the financial statements, right? When it comes to the most appropriate cost of goods sold value, for the purpose of measuring the speed of inventory movement, it's not that simple. I'll show you why. Suppose you go to your company accountant and ask them for details on the cost of goods sold calculation. They show you the values in the column called From Accounting. This is a list of general ledger account numbers that are part of the company's overall cost of goods sold, which is reported on its financial statements. You then extract sales records from your company database, including the cost of each sale. These records yield the cost listed in the column called from product sales. What's the difference between these two representations of the cost of goods sold? Which one is better if we want to correctly interpret the speed at which our inventory sells, and even more importantly, correctly interpret changes in the speed at which our inventory sells? The difference between these two sets of numbers is that information from the accounting records includes additional general ledger categories that are highlighted in yellow. These categories are not linked to specific sales transactions. Looking at the descriptions of the highlighted general ledger codes, we can see that many of them are adjustments to the value of inventory for a variety of reasons. We can also see what we paid for inbound freight and what we paid for labor, i.e. the wages for personnel creating our finished goods inventory. This is where we need to use logic to make a decision. We are measuring the speed of selling inventory. If the company made adjustments to the value of inventory, those adjustments are in no way related to measuring selling speed, so I would not include those in the cost of goods sold value when calculating inventory turns. The cost of inbound freight and labor does relate to the speed of selling inventory since the more we sell, the more labor we need to keep producing inventory and the more we would be paying inbound freight to replenish our raw materials. Therefore, I would include inbound freight and labor costs in the cost of goods sold value in my inventory turn calculation. This leaves us with the following costs of goods sold for our inventory turns formula. As an aside, if you're the company owner and you're sitting in a bank with your financial statements in hand, 
and the banker wants to compare your inventory terms to other companies they serve, you will certainly want to use the cost of goods sold value from the financial statements. That way, you avoid having to explain why you exclude some general ledger entries from your calculation, but for internal monitoring of your inventory performance, Make your own logical choice on what to include in the cost of goods sold value for your inventory turns metric. Let's move on to see what value we put in the denominator of our equation for the inventory cost. There are two popular choices. In some cases, the inventory value is the average cost of the inventory at the start of the year, if we're calculating our metric annually, and the inventory cost at the end of the year. In other cases, people may choose to use the end of year inventory cost. In the table shown, we see that we calculate the inventory cost for each item we carry by multiplying the units in stock by the unit cost. We then add up the inventory cost of all of our items to get the total cost of our inventory. Let's use the cost on the screen as our end of year value and calculate our inventory turns for the year in question. Our turns are 614425 divided by 120813, which is approximately 5.1 turns. You may be wondering why I use accounting information for this formula instead of just canceling out the cost per unit from the formula and calculating turns as the number of units sold over the number of units in stock. That's because the unit cost of an item can change throughout the year as pricing changes with your suppliers. We can take the inventory turns metric one step further. If you're a company that purchases raw materials and manufactures finished goods, you may wish to calculate inventory turns for your finished goods separately from inventory turns of your raw materials. This gives you an idea of how well you're managing each of the two categories of inventory. The inventory turns formula for finished goods is the same as the one we've used so far, namely, cost of goods sold divided by inventory cost. For inventory turns of raw materials, we have to think a bit differently because we don't sell raw materials. But if we remember that we're interested in measuring the speed of movement of inventory, we essentially sell raw materials to the production floor. The equivalent formula to calculate inventory turns for raw materials would then be the cost of raw materials used in production divided by the inventory cost. Like the previous inventory turns formula, the cost of inventory used can either be the average value at the start and end of the time period being measured, or the ending value. You now know exactly how to measure inventory turns, but we need to learn how to interpret the numbers. What is a good number of turns in a year? This value will vary by industry, so a good approach is to look up the financial records of public companies in your industry and use their financial statements to compare your inventory turns to theirs. You may also be able to locate a consolidated industry report. Keep in mind that what you are comparing on the financial statements, though, will include all of those extra general ledger accounts. We have seen how to calculate inventory turns depending on the purpose for which the calculation is intended. For financial analysts, bankers, and inventory management personnel, the calculation can be slightly different. Knowing the details behind the differences is crucial in properly aligning this metric to the types of decisions you need to make. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to press like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive a message when new videos are released. You can also explore the other videos in this series or visit our website for more information on how to use data analysis to improve your business.